What's up, competitor? Welcome back to this brand new episode of the Compete Every Day podcast and the importance of opening yourself up to open up opportunities in your life. I'm going to tell you why vulnerability is key to being a better competitor and how you can start implementing it this week in your life. Before I do, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any new episodes and videos that we drop here on YouTube each and every week. So recently I shared this post about vulnerability. I talked about the three ways that leaders can learn to be more vulnerable, pouring into their teams by opening themselves up, asking better questions to create better conversations with their team, and looking at the bigger picture of life. The reason I've become so fascinated with this topic is Similar to gratitude, vulnerability has been one of my biggest struggles as a leader. I've never wanted to really open myself up. You you flash back to maybe when I was in middle school or high school, like I just tended to close myself off because I felt like if I could put a space between you and between me, I could prevent myself from getting hurt. I could make you believe that everything was hunky-dory, that I had everything together. And if you believed that I had everything together all the time, maybe you would want to follow me. Maybe you would see that I was, quote, a winner and you would want to take after me. That's this crazy idea I had in regards to leadership. And that idea bit me in the ass time and time again because what I thought it did was make me a better leader by keeping me safe from any kind of attacks, any kind of hurt, any kind of harm. And really what it did is it put a wall between me and anybody I was trying to serve, trying to support, trying to connect with. And unless you can connect with someone, you can't influence them. And so I'm struggling to connect with people. I'm wondering why I can't connect with people. And it's all because I refuse to be vulnerable because I was scared of getting hurt. I was scared of opening myself up. I saw it as a sign of weakness because I was wrong. Brene Brown talks about this so much in her work and so eloquently puts it in a number of ways about the importance of being vulnerable in our workplace as a leader. Patrick Lencioni does the same in The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, which is an incredible book. And one of the things that we just forget is that vulnerability isn't weakness. It isn't opening yourself up and just letting all of your secrets pour out into the world. What it is, is opening yourself up to allow others to connect with you, to allow others to see what you see. And the reason I titled today's episode, Opening Yourself Up to Open Up Your Opportunities, is because the one thing I've learned really over the last five to 10 years is when you open yourself up, when you put your guard down, when you get out from behind that wall and you start talking to others and you're connecting with others, the opportunities you find are endless. My friend Grant, uh, that was one of my coaches in, in speaker training years ago, talked about how it was so important for him to talk about what he did, to talk about when he was starting speaking, like he had to tell people, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is what I'm trying to do. Do you know anyone I can help? See, when I started, I didn't want to ask for help. I didn't want to tell other people what I was doing because I was worried they may judge me. I was afraid of being vulnerable to say, hey, I'm still new at this. I need help. I can help others, but I need help getting into places to do that. Who do you know? I saw that as a sign of weakness instead of this guy that had it all together. And I learned what I was doing was letting my pride be more important than my progress. I was letting my pride and my ego in the moment be more important than the goals I set and the people I was trying to help. I had to change that mindset. I had to get out honestly of my own way. I had to learn to be vulnerable and say, I'm going to put this out there and this may suck and this may hurt and this may not work the way I want it to, but I want you to know where I'm coming from, what I'm trying to do, who I'm trying to help and that I need help. I did the same a few years ago when I made a post on social media and looking at the picture, you would think that everything was just great. But I posted that picture, which had been from about a year earlier and made the comment that You know, from the outside, you would see this picture on social and assume everything's going well, but inside, I was dying. Inside, I was absolutely at my darkest place. Honestly, I took birthday pictures for Compete Every Day just trying to snap myself out of it. I was overwhelmed at the time with business debt I'd taken on early in business that have since kind of paid off. I was overwhelmed that I'd lost some teammates just because we were so financially strapped. I was overwhelmed with 
just goals that weren't working out the way I wanted to. I was in the darkest of places. Honestly, as I shared earlier this year, it's probably one of the few times in my life I've had just suicidal thoughts. I was struggling in such a hole that I I couldn't get out. And I was putting this fake front online to say, listen, I'm here, I'm showing up, I'm a competitor, I got this, I can handle this. But inside, I was like, can I handle this? Can I keep showing up? I don't know if I'm the person to do this. Why am I even dealing with this? This sucks. I've never been in a darker spot. I had to talk to a few friends about it and just say, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've never been more alone. I remember breaking down in my kitchen to my wife at one point because for the first time in my life, I had a credit card bill that I couldn't pay. And for me, like growing up, trying to be just fiscally responsible and then not when I got into business and not being able to do that, like I was overwhelmed with this idea that everything I built was falling apart. In reality, it wasn't. It was a valley that I had to climb out of. But in that moment, it felt like the world was ending. It felt like part of my world was ending. I don't actually think I've ever shared that publicly other than with a few friends. And and I remember sitting down and writing everything I was going through. And I remember talking to a few of those friends and just opening up. And for a couple of them, it was a complete shock because I always had this front up that I was going to overcome it. And I, and I still have that attitude of like optimism, endless optimism that no matter how dark things get, I believe I'm part of a bigger story. I believe I'm going to find a way to get through it. It it may not be easy. It may not be pain-free, but I'll find a way to get through it. But to them, it wasn't that. To them, it was like everything's always good all the time. And so when I opened up, it just created some of the best conversations I've had. And it was in that moment of me just kind of saying, this is what I'm going through. It's not what you see online, but this is reality. And honestly, I don't know if I can do it alone. So I need help and I need accountability and I just need you to encourage me. And it was through that, conversation started and it was out of that dark spot that I started doing more writing and and positioning some things that I get to talk about with others now. It helped change how I go about my daily processes that I'm able to coach people through. It was from those moments that friends help illuminate different opportunities I had and help pull me out of that dark spot. But it wasn't because I tried to keep going it all my own, keep this shield up, say nothing is ever wrong. It's because I opened myself up. Now you don't have to have that extreme of a story. You don't have to have gone through the darkest times in your life, maybe this year or before. Maybe it just takes you sharing some of your fears, some of your doubts, the times you fell short, the times in life you need help. A lot of times we let our pride derail any of our progress. We're worried about sharing our failures because what will someone else think? I've got a laundry list of failures. T-shirt ideas that didn't work out. T-shirt companies that didn't work out. Speeches that I've walked out of and thought, oh my God, I just bombed. I was terrible. Like I've had these moments too. Those are the moments we connect with. It's not perfect. It's not seeing someone who has it all together, who has all the following, who has all the attention, who looks like life is completely perfect. We don't connect with that. So why would we as leaders put up that fake front? If we're not connecting with other people who appear to be perfect, why would we try to? Well, they have it all together. Why do they need help? Why do they need support? What, what, who can I connect them to? They've got it all. It's the people we see showing up every day competing doing their absolute best to take on anything life throws at them that talks about, here's where I fell short, here's how I overcame. Here's where I have doubts and fears. Here's how I learned to silence them. It's in those moments as leaders that we open up and we share our struggles. We share how we battle them or how we overcame them that allows us to connect with other people. And when we learn to connect with other people, we can influence them. We can encourage them. We can challenge them to start showing up and competing every day like we do. See, the opportunities you may have thought of initially had to be financial, and sometimes those arrive. But a lot of times, it's those connections, it's those bigger opportunities, those things that you don't quite see in the moment that come back years later. See, the reason I keep hammering this home is maybe because this whole podcast is just a reminder to me. Maybe this isn't even about you listening. Maybe this is just me needing to tell myself over and over and over again, to keep showing up, keep opening up, and keep connecting because that's how we make impacts. That's how we connect with others and life is not meant to be left alone in isolation. We are meant to be in community, a competitor, a nation community. And so my plea to you leaders today is although this is a little bit different episode and maybe this is just a message to me, is to one person 
that you interact with at coffee, in the office, on Zoom, on text, whoever it is to date, find an opportunity to connect. Ask a better question. Have a deeper conversation. Share some of your own experiences with them. Be vulnerable. And in doing so, set yourself up to be more influential in their life. I'm cheering for you. Go win your week.